Have you ever had someone tell you that you just need to love yourself as if you should just know how to do that? <laughs> or maybe you've tried to tell yourself positive affirmations and you still find yourself beating yourself up. If so, I'm here to let you know that it's not that positive affirmations don't work. It's that it's only a piece of the puzzle. Self-love is both an internal state and an external expression. It's how we feel about ourselves, what we believe about ourselves, how we talk to ourselves, how we treat ourselves, how we allow others to treat us, and how we express ourselves. It's important to love ourselves because it is the foundation for everything in our lives. If we want to have better health, wealth, and relationships in our lives, it all starts with loving ourselves. This might sound like a simple concept, but it can be harder than it sounds. Why is it hard to love ourselves? Because we aren't taught how to do it. There's a whole industry based on selling us things that we think we need to have a better body, to make more money, and to attract love into our lives. It's also hard to love ourselves because it can require us to make difficult choices that can leave us feeling vulnerable, like leave a relationship to follow our dreams, or to leave a job that pays the bills but doesn't fulfill us. And how about the idea that it's better to give than to receive? What if it was actually better to give and to receive? This is why they tell you to put your own oxygen mask on first before helping someone else on a plane, because if you don't put your own mask on first, then you can't help someone else. And the same is true in our everyday lives. The more we love ourselves and show up for ourselves, the more we can show up for others. Now you might be thinking, this sounds good, but it's easy for you to say because you probably grew up with great parents, you had a good education and a good job, so it's probably been easy for you to love yourself. While some of this is true, I've definitely had my share of challenges in my life. There was a time in my life where I was so depressed that I had thoughts of suicide. And I ended up in an abusive relationship. And it was through self-love and living my purpose that I was able to heal from the depression and suicidal thoughts. And this is why I am so passionate about self-love and why I wrote a book about it, because self-love saved my life. One of the things that helped me on my journey of self-love was the understanding that quantum physics has proven that we are built up of fields of energy. Without going into too much detail, this essentially tells us that we are not our thoughts or our bodies. It is crucial that we understand and acknowledge this as we gain a better understanding of how to love ourselves. It is also, we also need to acknowledge that self-love is about self-leadership, and we are all the leaders of our lives. Now that we have that frame of reference for what self-love is, let's talk about three myths that surround it. The first myth is that self-love is the same as self-esteem, self-care, and narcissism. I was once interviewed on a podcast where the interviewer kept saying self-esteem instead of self-love. After the interview was over, I told the interviewer that I noticed she kept saying self-esteem instead of self-love and that I didn't think they were the same. Self-esteem is a piece of self-love, but self-love is more than self-esteem. Self-esteem is how we feel about ourselves, whereas self-love is not only how we feel about our ourselves, but what we, talk, what we say to ourselves, what we believe about ourselves, how we treat ourselves, how we allow others to treat us, and how we express ourselves. This is why you can tell yourself positive affirmations all day, but if you don't change your beliefs about yourself, you will continue to beat yourself up. These beliefs are often unconscious. Did you know that everything we hear around us from the time we are born until age seven is programmed in our unconscious to be true because we haven't yet developed the cognitive ability to distinguish between what is true and not true? Write down negative beliefs that you have about yourself. I challenge you to look at these beliefs and consider the possibility that you no longer need to carry these beliefs as truth. Self-love is also not the same as self-care. While it's important to take care of ourselves by getting massages and eating healthy, for example, if we are not speaking kindly to ourselves and we are not truly loving ourselves. Self-love is also not narcissism. Loving yourself doesn't mean that you don't love others too. It's because you love yourself that you are able to love others, and the greatest gift that we can give the people in our lives is to love ourselves so that we can show up with a full cup rather than empty and depleted. The second myth I'd like to bring your attention to is that self-love does not have a destination. Is that self-love has a destination. When I was interviewed on a podcast, the interview asked if I've arrived in regards to self-love, and I laughed and said no, because self-love is a moment-by-moment -moment practice. It is a never-ending process because we are always growing and changing. Our cells are literally dying and creating new ones all the time. This is why diets don't usually work, because they are focused on a result, for example, losing 10 pounds, rather than the journey of eating healthy. What permanent changes are you willing to implement in your life to make self-love a permanent part of your life? 
I challenge you to make these changes and to enjoy the journey rather than focusing on the destination. The last myth that I'd like to bring your attention to is that in order to love ourselves, we have to get rid of the bad parts of ourselves. Self-love is about embracing both our light and our darkness because all of it shapes us and it's through learning to love our darkness that we are able to truly love ourselves. I once had a boyfriend who told me that I can be a bitch sometimes. <laughs> to be honest, it didn't upset me because I realized that there are times when being a bitch is needed. For example, when we need to stand up for ourselves. I once asked him what he loved about me and he started listing things that I thought were bad. He said that he didn't see them as being bad, that they were just me. This helped me learn to love myself unconditionally because I realized that if he can love these parts of me, then I can too. What is your darkness? What parts of your body don't you like or things that you don't want people to know about you? I challenge you to tell yourself that you love that part of your body or aspect of yourself every day. So to recap, self-love is not self-esteem, self-care, or narcissism. Self-esteem and self-care are a piece of self-love, but self-love is also about how you allow others to treat you and how you express yourself in the world. Self-love is not narcissism because loving yourself doesn't mean that you don't love others too. I challenge you to look at your beliefs and ask yourself, is this really true? How do I know this is true? And what would be possible if this weren't true? Self-love does not have a destination. It is a never-ending journey and a moment-by-moment -moment practice. I challenge you to look at the goals you have in your life and ask yourself, are you focused on the destination or the journey? And how would your actions be different if you were focused on the journey rather than the destination? And lastly, self-love does not mean that we, um, self-love is not about getting rid of the bad parts of ourselves. When we truly love ourselves, we know that no part of us is bad. We get to love all of us because it makes us who we are. I challenge you to embrace the bad parts of yourself, knowing that none of it is bad. It makes you you, and there's no one who has ever been you or will ever be you. Even twins have a different fingerprint, so I challenge you to identify and embrace your uniqueness. Did you know that you had a one in a trillion chance of being born? That means you are a freaking miracle. <laughs> I leave you with one of my favorite quotes from Marianne Williamson, a return to love, reflections on the principles of A Course in Miracles. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. And it's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Thank you.